The captivating Anna Nagel stars in the story of four women, four women who sought out independence. I gave you the right to accept suggestions on my behalf. Narrow-minded husbands. You're my wife entrusted to my care. That's what marriage is. Each woman growing. Since you have been away, I've had to think for myself. A story of liberation and fulfillment. Anna Nagel as Elizabeth of Lady Mead. Good evening, I'm Dean Abbott. And I'm Sarah Chernus. It's Thursday, August 12th, and in news headlines tonight, Joliet police search for the killer after finding a Kendall County girl dead in a church there. And an Aurora official lashes out against possible county intervention in gambling revenues. President Clinton traveled to St. Louis today to sign a federal flood relief bill, and the first corporate compost facility in Kendall County moves through the reviewing process. We'll have these stories and more when TV 30 News continues. You want to have some fun? Some California fun? Then order the Aqua Sling from Riva Sport and let the fun fly. The Aqua Sling water balloon slingshot is just plain fun. Fun on the run and fun in the sun. The Aqua Sling can launch a water balloon the length of a football field or double that with a 200 yard competition model. The Aqua Sling is made in America and designed to last. It's easily used by one, two, or three people, and it comes with a lifetime guarantee. With your Aqua Sling, you get 72 biodegradable balloons, the garden hose fill nozzle, official Aqua Sling target, and detailed instructions on its, uh, proper use. Just call 1-800-544-7900. That's 1-800-544-7900. Have your credit card ready, and we can ship it to you tomorrow. Tomorrow. That's right. You could be having California fun in just a few days. The Aqua Sling costs a mere $19.95. So what are you waiting for? Order your California fun today. I'm Pam Nelson, inviting you to join me tonight at 1030 for Fox Valley Today. Far West Residential Services Executive Director Mimi Daboski and Kane County Cougar mascot Ozzy will be here to tell us how lives of persons living with disabilities are enriched through the programs they provide. And Joe Leidig will have a look at Fox Valley Theater. Tomorrow, Jan Wade of the Plano Chamber of Commerce will be here with exciting updates on Plano Hometown Days. Join me tonight at 1030 for Fox Valley Today. Here on TV 30, the Fox Valley's TV station. A police are searching for the killer of a rural Kendall County girl. Danielle McTee of rural Manuka was found in a Joliet church stairwell Tuesday with a gunshot wound to the back of her neck. McTee was an employee of the First National Bank's West Joliet office in Midland Avenue and frequently ate lunch on the church's grounds, according to reports. The teenager's body indicated a struggle ensued before the killing. According to Will County Coroner Patrick O'Neill, he says he will wait for the results of the test to determine whether the girl had been sexually assaulted before her death. King County officials have their handout looking for a cut of revenues from a riverboat gambling operation in the county. County Board Chairman Warren Kammerer and some of the memberships have been lobbying state lawmakers to pass legislation allowing counties to reap some financial benefits from gambling operations housed within their borders. Currently, the county receives no funding from the Hollywood Casino in Aurora. Aurora Alderman Robert O'Connor says if the county begins to reap benefits from the riverboats, it could take away some of the predicted financing in the city's budget. If the counties are successful in having part of the revenue come to them, it's going to diminish, it potentially could diminish some of the money coming to the cities uh, who are involved in the operations. The state has a choice, either take part of what is already coming in or expand the amount that's taxed uh, on the operations. And I, I 
who would guess as to which way they would go in that, except that I'm not sure that the counties are in the position yet to, to carry the issue. I think that there's still going to be a lot of discussion about that. O'Connor was against including projected revenues from the Aurora Riverboat casinos in the city's budget before it was enacted in April. He says the unexpected turn of events with others dipping their hands into riverboat pockets simply reinforces his views. Uh, we have to be very careful with whatever the revenue is that's coming from the casino operations because it's not always going to be there. And if you simply automatically or assume that you're going to put it into your general operating funds, uh, the day four, five, six years from now when the numbers aren't the same and the money is diminished and you don't have the same amount, you're going to have a problem because you've expanded your budget to take advantage of those funds and then you don't have anything to replace it with. So I think the council is going to act uh, pretty carefully in regard to the allocation overall of all of those, those casino operation uh, money. Mayor David Pierce, though, says it may not be fair for the county to begin taking revenues when they had nothing to do with landing the gaming facility in Aurora. The riverboats came to Aurora and totally worked with the city of Aurora, the local park district, and the units of government in this area. The county wasn't directly involved in that project because we didn't involve any county resources. At this point, the county is attempting to get legislation which would provide that they would get riverboat money. It would not come out of the city's share. It would come out of the state's share of the money. So in that sense, uh, it doesn't have any impact on us, whatever happens. County officials say the issue came about because they want to make sure their costs are covered in a possible Elgin project, either legislatively or by a separate agreement with the developer. It is unclear whether the two sides will come to an agreement before the Elgin developer's case is heard before the state gaming board on August 23rd. Well, a proposal for the first corporate-owned and operated compost facility in Kendall County is moving through the review process following a hearing last night before the Bristol Township Plan Commission. The Scotts Company is proposing to develop the composting facility at the corner of Galena and Beecher Roads. And residents of that area filled the Township Highway Department building last night to vent their concerns and have their questions addressed. Those questions dealt with truck traffic and noise factors and project representatives or project representatives pledged to satisfactorily deal with those concerns. The other major issue troubling neighboring homeowners was the odor problem that has occurred at other composting facilities in northern Illinois. Project manager Susan Schaefer says that has been or not been a problem at any of the sites operated by Scotts and shouldn't be an issue with the site near Bristol. That the windrows will be monitored for odor, aeration, moisture, temperature. Those are the three or four variables that are important um, to have the compost process work efficiently. Uh, odor control agents will be on site, but it's a, on a just-in-case uh, basis. Scotts does not use odor control agents um, typically. If a site comes in and it is pungent, they can be used, but it's only in that just-in-case. Now, despite the assurances, some residents weren't swayed. Scott's representatives agreed to provide free composting services for the township, but Dave Greider says he still sees the negatives outweighing the positives. Us people that have lived here, we would like a little more. I mean, it's not going to be too nice to tell people, yeah, we live down the road from the compost facility. Uh, when you're going to sell a house or something, how would you like to <laughs> say that? <laughs> I'm not comfortable with that. I think Bristol Township should get a little more something out of this than we're, than we're going to be getting. Just getting rid of our debris, I don't think is really enough. In the end, the commission's vote on the issue was split down the middle four to four. It moves to the county plan commission with a series of recommendations ranging from hours of operation to lighting the entrance drive. County plan commission will consider the issue at their August 25th meeting. The owner and operator of a charter flight service at the DuPage County Airport lashed out at the airport authority, charging them with violating his rights of free speech. Michael Norcus is accusing the authority of vindictively attempting to scare him into keeping quiet about, quote, waste and inefficiency at the DuPage Airport. Mr. Norcus's conference today was in a response to a letter he received from the attorneys representing the authority, one day after he reportedly participated in an August 2nd airport rally. In the letter, representatives of the firm of Bell, Boyd, and Lloyd stated that Industrial Air Charters regularly conducts an aviation-related business at the DuPage Airport, but it is not authorized to do so. DuPage Airport rules and regulations enacted by the Board of Commissioners states, no person shall engage in any business or commercial activity of any nature on airport property, except with the approval from the airport director.
Regulations require 2% of gross revenues as payments to the authority to conduct business at the airport, according to the letter. Norfus today, though, said he was paid the authority thousands and thousands each and every year to rent space and paid the airport authority tens of thousands of dollars in fuel flowage fees, a tax on each gallon of fuel purchased. Norfus said, quote, I used my rights and of speech, and they punished me for it. I may either shut down my business and move it to a more distant airport and spend the same thousands of dollars to lighten the tax load in another county. Unquote. The authority has requested Norcus to cease all business at the airport and to supply audited financial statements for his company in order to determine an accurate figure to cover the cost of airport operations at the airport. Well, an Aurora man was taken into custody after he was seen bathing himself at a downtown public fountain. Police say Mario Q. Gonzalez of the 800 block of Gillette Avenue faces charges of disorderly conduct after a witness saw the man splashing and washing himself inside the fountain near the East Downer Place parking garage. Now, police say that Gonzalez could have possibly been electrocuted due to the high voltage wires that run underneath that fountain. Well, President Clinton has returned to the Midwest with federal assistance, dollars for flood victims. That story is next as the news continues. Hooked on Phonics worked for me. 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 Learn to read with Hooked on Phonics, the musical reading program. Then, read to learn with SRA reading comprehension used by over 60 million people. Hooked on Phonics worked for me. Call 1 800 A B C D E F G. She's gonna love this. Happy birthday, Lauren. Introducing Hallmark's Personalize It, a new kind of card you make right in the store. This Tuesday, you'll finally be 29. Wait, wasn't she 29 last year? Fill in a name or write it all yourself. Come to think of it, Lauren's been 29 as long as I've known her. For the store nearest you, just call 1-800-HALLMARK. Happy birthday, Lauren. This Tuesday, you'll finally be 29. Again. That works. Hallmark has the ways to say you care. President Clinton was in St. Louis today to sign a $5.7 billion flood relief bill, but crop damage reports are still running into the billions of dollars. Yesterday, the Ag Department released a damage report of the farms affected by the flooding. Scott Cohn files the report. This is what the floodwaters are leaving behind in the Midwest. Acres of land that's supposed to be lush with crops this time of year. Instead, it's a muddy mess and a costly one. The value of corn and soybean production lost due to floods, excessive rain, and drought is about $2.5 billion. The Agriculture Department says the soybean crop will be 13% smaller than last year's thanks to the flood, and the corn crop will be down 22%. Eugene Stoffaker can attest to that. On his farm along the Pecatonica River in southwest Wisconsin, he normally grows about 300 acres of corn and soybeans. This year... I've got 30 acres, about 32 acres left. But for Stoffaker and hundreds of other farmers in the northern part of the flood zone, that only begins to tell the story, because last year was a mess too. This field has had standing water in it almost nonstop since last fall. Those stalks out there are remnants of last year's corn crop that never got harvested. As many as 90,000 acres were lost to wet weather in Wisconsin last year. Eugene Stoffaker lost about a third of his crop. So the flood this year adds insult to injury. You get discouraged sometimes, but uh, I, I maintain a, try to maintain a pretty upbeat outlook because uh, I, the discouragement doesn't really help you a whole lot. That outlook could come in handy in the months ahead, according to experts, who now say the crop that survived is especially vulnerable to frost. Uh, normal frost is not going to allow these uh, corn soybean crops that were planted late or stunted by the uh, cool temperatures in August to uh, develop at their normal date. Still, agriculture department officials say there's little danger of higher food prices yet, but they point out things can change. Eugene Stoffaker, meanwhile, says he will survive. He just wishes he could remember what a normal year is like. Scott Cohn, Arlington, Wisconsin. 
Police took an Aurora woman into custody following a traffic stop. Christy M. Heron of the 2000 block of Bradford Lane was arrested and charged with unlawful possession of a controlled substance. According to police, nearly one and a half grams of cocaine were found in Heron's socks. Police say that she also was wanted on other traffic charges. Fox Fest Aurora 93 opens tomorrow, and organizers are billing it as the new event that encompasses the best of summer events Aurora has seen in recent years. Returning events will include the Mid-America Power Boat Race Championships, Children's Stage Entertainment, Kitty Rides, Fireworks, and a variety of foods and main stage entertainment. Special additions to this year's event include the outdoor recreation and sporting show and nationally known entertainment, which will be featured nightly on the main stage. On Friday night, you'll be able to enjoy the best in country music with the Jump in the Saddle Band and the Kentucky Headhunters. The Laugh Factory will host a comedian show prior to Saturday night's concert by Three Dog Night, and the main stage entertainment concludes Sunday evenings with the Aurora Best Gospel Choir's opening for the All Bubba Blues Band. For more information on the Fox Fest, you can contact the Aurora Civic Activities Office at 844-3640. Well, the 12th annual Plano Hometown Days kicks off tomorrow night on Main Street. And three days of fun, food, and more food is named Hometown Depot Days. Carol Olenschlager, coordinator for Hometown Days, explains the opening events. Starting out Friday night, we have Faze Pork Chop Barbecue, which will be over at the Lutheran Church. And they have the pork chop and the chicken dinner. And it starts out and will be from 5 to 7 o'clock. And that's a new item that's been added this year. And we're all looking for a good turnout there. The DJ is uh, the Smith Brothers. And they are really crowd pleasers because they get the, the kids involved in things that are going on. they played out at the Y many times and had been recommended to us. So we're looking forward to seeing them. They do the hula hoop contest and uh, the limbo and things like that, and then they give prizes to the kids. Carnival rides continue through the event with other highlights, such as a horseshoe tournament, water fights, a fun run and walk, and the annual parade. Olin Schlager says that she's had plenty of support in organizing this year's event. This is the third year that I've been involved with it. Each year it keeps growing a little bit. We get, try to get a lot of people actively involved in Hometown Days and uh, working together as a community. I think that we do a fine job with everyone cooperating. Um, the Golden Harvesters have been very active in, in working with us down there, and all of their weekend activities are planned around hometown days. They start out at Face Pork Chop Barbecue and, and um, meet periodically. They help with some of the things that are going on. They help with the booth over at the Historical Society. They will also be downtown helping us with things that are going on. Grand Marshals for this year's Hometown Days Parade are Mayor Sue Nesson, who will also be spending some time in a dunk booth, and Cliff and Margaret Ramsey. A St. Charles wrestler has earned a pair of prestigious team appointments. Dave has that, plus all the local scores and highlights, coming up next in the TV 30 News. Wabonzi Community College's academic programs meet your high expectations. Let us help you realize your potential and reach your career goals today. Enroll now in a career or transfer degree course. Take advantage of our flexible class schedule of day, evening, or weekend courses. Fall daytime classes begin August 23rd. Evening classes start August 30th. Enroll today by calling the Sugar Grove campus at 466-4811 or the Aurora campus at 892-3334. What? Jason's gonna be there? If you think your face is special, other people will too. So use Noxzema every time you wash. It's better than soap. Dissolves oil without over drying for healthy looking skin. Your face belongs to Noxzema. And here's a different kind of Noxzema, Noxzema Plus, with an added moisturizer plus a fresh scent for healthy looking skin. Your face belongs to Noxzema. Static can get you off on the wrong foot. It'll stop you. Static can be a real drag. It'll stop you. And static can be an embarrassing slip-up. It'll stop you, yeah. The more you move, the more static can build up. 
but you can stop static cling with Bounce. Bounce leaves clothes virtually static free. It won't stop you. Bounce, stop static before static stops you. Well, a St. Charles graduate has been named to the Asics Tiger and the Amateur Wrestling News High School All-American teams. The 171-pound state champion, Javon Herman, was named to the Asics Tiger third team and to the Amateur Wrestling News fourth team. Herman will attend the University of Illinois this fall. Well, the Mid-American Power Boat Races will be held this weekend on the Fox River in Aurora. The five-year-old Power boat, bait, boat Races are being held in conjunction with the Fox Fest Aurora 93. 13-year powerboat veteran driver Jim Sharp, who's a 1981 graduate of Naperville Central, talks about racing on the Fox River in Aurora. Uh, yeah, in the past I used to run SST 60, and when I was running 60, I was doing pretty good. And uh, the last year I was running 60, Greg got into the 60 class, and being a new guy, he was kind of asking questions about, you know, what kind of boats do I like, and what kind of propellers do I like, and some do's and don'ts, and I just kind of gave him a couple tips on what worked well for me and what didn't, and he experimented around a little bit himself and took on some of my ideas and changed a few of them around, and he's been having a real successful year as a result of it. And now you're in the SST 100s, and those things move. Yeah, the SST 100s are running about 10 or 15 miles an hour faster. Uh, we're about a foot longer boat, and yeah, we're seeing a, a whole lot more action. Uh, the, the guys that are running it are real competitive, and we're having a real good time this year. How long have you been racing? Now, this is my 13th year racing. I started out in the small stock outboards, and I've gradually moved my way up to the 100 class. How's the 93 season been to you so far? Uh, so far this year, I'm real happy. I started out with a new boat this year, and it's a new class for me this year. And first couple races, I was struggling. The last couple races, I've been doing real well. I'm real happy. Can you talk about racing here on the Fox River in Aurora? Yeah, I'm looking real forward to the race here in Aurora. Uh, what makes this race so special is we get a lot of local sponsors, and we put their names on the boats, and then what happens is their family and their friends and their coworkers, they all come down to the race site and they start cheering for us. And it, the, the best incentive we've got is to hear the crowd get behind us. The more people we can get here and get cheering for us, the more we'll push things to the limit and the more encouraged we are to really try the best we can do to win. Well, he may not be Old Man River, but he might be getting close. Moses Malone is returning to the Philadelphia 76ers as an unrestricted free agent. Malone led the Sixers to an NBA title in 1983. Armin Gilliam, formerly of the Sixers, has signed with the New Jersey Nets. Well, Elgin's American Legion team advances to the state's American Legion State Tournament after defeating Pekin 7-2 yesterday in Fairview Heights, a uh, St. Louis suburb. Last year's national runner-up, Arlington Heights, led Belleville 6-0 going into the fourth inning. But the Belleville team sent nine batters to the plate and scored five runs all after two outs. Ouch. Final score was Belleville 8, Arlington Heights 7. Well, this must be the week where all the Little League teams are either fighting amongst themselves or having their fingers caught in the cookie jar. The Dominican Republic and perennial World Series champion Taiwan have both been disqualified from the 1993 World Series. The Dominican Republican team will be replaced by a team from Panama. It seems that the Dominican Republic ball club was eliminated due to the same set of circumstances that caused the Philippines to be stripped of last year's title. And Dean, that's a look at sports. There's some hot, humid days, but a little sunshine forecast for the Fox Valley. Weekend weather's just a moment. And our house dressing is a creamy honey Dijon. Oh, what the heck. After that aerobics class, I can afford to be a little bad. And save it for dessert. This is new craft. Free honey Dijon. Fat free, cholesterol free. Yummy. <laughs> hey, just wait till you taste it. Mmm, this is delicious. Well, it is made with real honey and that tangy Dijon mustard. New craft free honey Dijon non fat dressing. If it tastes too good to be fat free, it's craft free. I don't suppose you've got any craft free chocolate cake? <laughs> What's for dinner? Hamburger helper lasagna. I'm gonna make a real good. Hot home cooked hamburger helper. Makes a real good meal for me. Denture wearers, here's Jane Powell for Paladin. Worried about denture odor? You'll love new Mintier Double Action Paladin. 
a new Mintier Double Action Tablet that fights tough stains and controls denture odor. Try new Double Action Polident. Joan, are you going to lunch? Yeah, but I'm also taking my car for a quick oil change at 76 Express Lube. Are they any good? They've earned my trust. Why don't you come with me? We'll be back in time. I come here because they do the job right. And I put it on my 76 credit card. 76 Express Loop. Pleasant temperatures and plenty of humidity will make for some muggy days over the weekend. Larry says there's a chance for rain, too, and he joins us with the forecast. A hot, humid day with most of the rain going to the south of us here in the Fox Valley. Good evening, Larry Nelson with a look at the TV30 weather. Well, as you can see, low pressure system over much of the central Midwest is bringing a lot of rain to many portions of western Illinois, Iowa, Missouri, and out in the Dakotas, although there's cool air behind that frontal system out in the Dakotas and Montana. Here in the Fox Valley, though, it looks like hot and humid will continue until that frontal system pushes through later this week. High temperatures around the 48 contiguous on the warm side again today. We find that uh, temperatures, especially in the deep south, really on the warm side with heat indexes again over 100 degrees. Here in the Midwest, heat indexes into the 90s. Overnight lows tonight chilling down again in the west and Pacific Northwest where uh, they still run quite a bit cooler than normal temperature wise but here in the Fox Valley will drop down to around 65 degrees or so and the deep south in the Gulf of Mexico region they'll have overnight lows into the 70s another hot and steamy evening. Precip rather temperatures for the next few days through the 16th of the month we're anticipating that we'll find temperatures averaging pretty much near normal for this time of the year with the west and Pacific Northwest below normal and the south and east parts of the United States above normal for the same period. Precipitation is anticipated to run a little bit above normal here for the Fox Valley region. We'll see some showers out there uh, probably Sunday and Monday for sure, maybe even a little into Saturday. Below normal precipitation though is what we're looking for for the west coast and the southwest. Well, taking a look at that forecast for the TV30 viewing area, tonight partly cloudy, overnight fog. We're looking for north winds around 10 miles an hour and an overnight low about 65 degrees or so. Then tomorrow, a partly sunny, warm day, humid, high right around 80 degrees. And for Friday evening, partly cloudy, mild, overnight low 60. By Saturday, partly cloudy, humid again, high 84. The rain then moves in for Sunday, and 84 is a high. Scattered showers persisting through Monday with a high at 83 degrees. 87 was our high officially today. 70, the overnight low last night at Broadcast Center. 558 for sunrise and 755 for sunset. Normally at this time of the year, we should see 84 is a high and 61 is a low. Well, there you have it. That's how the weather shapes up on a Thursday evening. You have a good evening. Thank you, Larry. Well, first it was fisticuffs at Arlington Stadium. The next day it was nudity. Just days after Texas Ranger pitcher Nolan Ryan pounded Chicago White Sox third baseman Robin Ventura, many of the 35,400 customers and several ball players watched as a young woman stripped off her pink polka dot bikini while standing in a window of a luxury box, number 27, between third base and home plate. Only three people were watching the game. That was the pitcher, the catcher, and the batter, said Bob Wallace of Coryville, who is sitting with his two children in section 316 directly below that box. Everybody else in the ballpark was watching what was going on behind us. Red-faced Ranger officials say it took them about seven minutes to get security officers up to the suite to stop the dance and to eject the woman from the ballpark. And that's our report for this Thursday, August 12th. I'm Dean Abbott. And I'm Sarah Chernus. Have a great night.
Sandwich in all of the Fox Valley. This is WFXV TV 30. Steve Samson in the local papers the other day. How are you? You take how my face is, how my body language is, and that's what clicks in your head and what makes you understand how I'm saying hi. of stuff but what you want to look for is a lot of them have specialty products that are not only low in fat but they're heart healthy now the heart healthy stuff means that they're under say 20 to 25 grams of fat a piece today. I'm responsible for coordinating all aspects of the show. I research and schedule the guests and prepare questions for my hosts, as well as manage the technicians and direct each live broadcast. At WFXV, I've implemented several original segments airing regularly as part of Fox Valley Today. with John Calloway at the Aurora Chamber of Commerce dinner and he had some wonderful things to say to us about change in the nation and uh, reflecting on the Aurora situation with the riverboat gambling. Uh, how do you feel uh, the community is going to embrace this new uh, prospect for business and uh, the changes we're facing in the economy? Well I think that there's a great uh, need or a perceived need to really go ahead with things. To me indicative of any kind of strong emotional bond between people. Halcyne itself seems to be taking somewhat of a journey or a risk in getting something like this started. Is there, are there things? How many schools are involved? Do you guys know? Five or six. Okay, well, good luck today, and I hope you guys do real well in your practice and in your tournament. Andy Miller, on behalf of WFXV TV 30, Leo's and Sandwich and Metroprint, I want to present you with a plaque for being this month's Fox Valley's Finest Student of the Month. Congratulations. <laughs> Good evening, I'm Dean Abbott. And I'm Sarah Chernus. It's Thursday, August 12th. Members and people in the audience that maybe recognized you. Who are you and what, what do you have in your future? I just, just got busy in the last few months. I've got a couple commercials on the air. I shot an old style commercial with Dennis Furrier, who's a very popular Chicago actor. And uh, I have an episode of The Untouchables coming up on uh, WGN on Sunday, October 18th. Out there, did you have rain? Were you one of the unlucky? Um, 
I went to school in California, so it just barely ever rained. I think oh. we had an earthquake maybe a month oh, before awful. my prom. <laughs> but um, yeah, and uh, one thing we do want to remind all our viewers is that uh, prom season is a wonderful time. It's also a very dangerous time uh, with uh, right. drinking and driving and, and a lot of decisions that are made uh, around prom time. So. I love that. It's called yeah. the Everlasting the ever Kiss. <laughs> That's right. The Everlasting <laughs> Kiss. Basically, these are prosthetics. These are manufactured by a company called Cinema Secrets. So this is uh, Captain Cutthroat that we're uh, following from the book here. And um, we were talking about trying to avoid some of the masks and the, the props that get in the way and are, and are hot and uncomfortable. And so one of the things we're going to do on this one is paint on the eye patch. school in California, so it just barely ever rained. I think uh, we had an earthquake maybe a month oh, before awful. my prom. <laughs> but um, yeah, and uh, one thing we do want to remind all our viewers is that uh, prom season is a wonderful time. It's also a very dangerous time uh, with uh, drinking and driving and, and a lot of decisions that are made uh, around prom time. So. I love that. It's called yeah. the Everlasting the ever Kiss. <laughs> That's right. The Everlasting <laughs> Kiss. Basically, these are prosthetics. These are manufactured by a company called Cinema Secrets. So this is uh, Captain Cutthroat that we're uh, following from the book here. And um, we were talking about trying to avoid some of the masks and the, the props that get in the way and are, and are hot and uncomfortable. And so one of the things we're going to do on this one is paint on the eye patch. around the boat so the glass wouldn't break and uh, 
that's not good. Of course, it's very safe, so the glass doesn't get you, but it doesn't break the bottle. It was OSHA. What? It was OSHA. <laughs> I think you'd have done better with just uh, one of Canfield's products of course. <laughs> my soda pop is the melon. Thanks a lot. Too bad, huh? Oh, this is